in the beginning, we would just, okay, how are we going to put kids in seats in this school? And we really didn't have a vision other than we knew that the small community, school community concept was very effective. Our whole theme from the beginning with students and teachers is that students will demonstrate what they know. Not just through a test, but they will demonstrate through projects, through presentations, what they know. And so that would be the theme. We knew that we were coming here and we were going to be teaching with a different mindset, a different philosophy, which was engaging the students. It sounded like a lot of work. You know, I've been teaching a long time and I was, I was going, oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. And I have to admit, your first reaction is reluctance because you can't see the outcome. You're, you're trusting someone to tell you that it's, it's really going to be a great thing. Okay guys, we're going to set up the electrochemical cell and you're going to test the voltage and you got four different metals and we're going to find the different voltages for each of the metals. And until you do it, it's hard to believe. When you're in your own classroom, you're kind of cut off from everybody and you're doing your own thing. Um, you get really used to your own way of teaching. And so when someone's telling you to try to do something different, you, you're really reluctant. I need another person to record. It's rare when you go to a traditional school and you have this kid excited about doing the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I can't wait to go do that. You know, they'll do it because they, they're going to get a grade at the end of the day. Uh, but they don't get that excitement. On the other hand, if you start uh, having those kids build something with it, they forget about the grade. It's more about, let's see if it actually is, is going to work. They get excited about it. And they're doing all this math without actually realizing that they're doing this math. We found that this bridge could hold 149 pounds because none of the members um, surpassed the maximum compression and the maximum tension. They started from raw math, very theoretical, and then they moved on to technology and then from there we're actually going to apply it by using the stress analyzer. Here we go. 12. We're, uh oh, 60, 80, 90, 100, 120 folks. I think it reached its max right there. Yeah. There, there it is. is. Okay. Awesome. As a new school, the challenges were pretty demanding from I think all of us, students, administration, uh, teachers. It was a challenge, especially because it wasn't just a traditional school. As I mentioned, this was a new school with a new philosophy. One of the challenges was in uh, understanding the philosophy of it all, really understanding how much you need to work together. And one teacher might say, okay, here we have the bridge building project coming up, and okay, I'm just going to get it over with as quickly as possible and get back to my own stuff. Whereas you need to understand that the bridge building needs to be your own stuff. And people, are, I think, are s slowly learning that. Yeah, it still worked really well, but I didn't really, I couldn't integrate it entirely into what we were doing until the second semester. It's a lot easier now. Last year, kind of uh, apprehensive about uh, how is this going to work out, how are we going to communicate. And then the people who have some experience in it, they kind of let others know, hey, this is how we did it last year. You go into class and you get a question from a student saying, when am I ever going to use this chemistry? You know, I'm never going to do this in my life. Why should I care? And, and that's a real question that you need to be able to answer. So when I came to Harmony and the English teacher was teaching some of the chemistry and then the history teacher was teaching some chemistry because the theme was the same in all the classrooms, then when the kid comes in and says, when am I going to use this, I get to say, when you go to your math class today, they're going to talk about pH, and pH is in a logarithmic scale, and that's what we're going to learn today. And then they go, oh. I've done a fantastic job tying you know, English and math and science and the CT stuff all together so that the kids are getting, you know, everything. Hey, look how Rebels did it. All right. Just not all the way through? through. Yeah, just about halfway through. All right. Blew that thing in there. I've been teaching, this is my 18th year. I was getting really burned out as an instructor, and, and this has totally, you know, rejuvenated me as an instructor. So, I, you know, I spend long, long hours here trying to make this, uh, you know, as successful as possible. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to lie and say it's not more work. It is more work. But, you know, with with the U.S. falling behind, specifically California falling behind, I mean, it's really important that we we kind of do what's best for the students. We looked at data of how our kids are leaving us and, and what degree are we really preparing them. We had a very low A to G completion rate. And so we realized that we had a systemic issue with the fact that our six period traditional schedule 
did not have enough leeway, especially with remediation and intervention requirements, to really have the problem-based learning and the integrated instructional model that we, we felt was necessary. The seven period is not magic. It's not some magic period. It's the idea that you need seven period to implement these other things that are important. Project-based learning, pathways, those are important. The kid picks a pathway. They get invested in that pathway. Those kids, it, there's research out there that shows those kids do not fail. Those kids succeed. I want to see this school as being the jewel of the community, as being the model, not only for this uh, area, but for the state, if you will. You know, here we are at, in Strathmore. Nobody knows where Strathmore is. Right in, in the middle of some uh, uh, orange fields, behind some trailer parks, and, and we, we have already created some excitement out there. There's a lot more districts that look like us than look like LA Unified. And so if we can make it successful, then they can make it successful. And, and we're going to make it successful, I can tell you that.